So I want to shed some light on that thing, the tax that we had on wine. For some it's a good tax, for others it is a bad tax. It depends on your standpoint. And Maggie Xiao worked with, uh, with me, a student of mine at MIU. And so I will try to be fast. Um, okay, okay, so taxes. So as soon as you impose a tax, there are people that try to dodge that, that tax and not like pay the tax. The window tax in the UK, in France, is one of, of the things because it, it led to these outcomes that I think this picture shows, shows you that because windows were supposed to be um, a proxy for like wealth. So you just close, close them and you just have a third of the people. You just pay a third of the tax at, uh, compared to what they thought it should be. And for wine, it could have been the same thing. So it's for lots of things, a thing that looks the same. So this is the, the tax was based on the Airbus and Boeing um, dispute, uh, who pays what, who receives and, and subsidies. And uh, the US imposed a 25% tax, a punity ta uh, punitive tax on lots of goods, on like olive, cheeses and stuff like that, but also wine. And wine only on the four countries that are involved like uh, into uh, an Airbus, and that's France, Spain, Germany, and the UK. And Italy didn't have that tax. Argentina, Australia didn't have that tax. So, which now could mean it gives an edge to like countries that do not like pay this 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 tax. Here is a little thing. It tells you where, and here is some some wine. But you see, it's olives, and it has like pages and and like, pages. The one thing is, how can you dodge the tax? It was a tax on still bottled wine above an alcohol content of 14%. So you can get out of this class. You can make it sparkling or bulk or stronger. So more than 14. So these are the options to dodge the, the tax. And the tax was in place from October 2019 through March 2021. Uh, and then it was suspended and then revoked in June 2021. Um, so, okay, so I need to talk a little bit about like the loss of labeling and loss of taxes. And that also leads me to something that we published in the Journal of Wine Economics in 2015. Um, so the first thing is like labeling laws. So, um, so there is, a, a table wine goes up to 14%, is there, a pointer? Is there a pointer here? I can of course jump there. Okay, so we are we are we are here, and table wine is deemed wine up to, up to fourteen percent. Within this class, you can claim your alcohol content uh, one. Oh, I think I screwed this up. This this should be one point. No, this is there. Okay. 1.5% 1, 1. higher or lower than the actual is. So you could say it has like 12% um, is the truth, and you can claim or state it has 13.5 legal, or you can claim it has 10.5 legal. So for wines stronger than 14, that kind of, uh, that room that you have is only plus minus 1%. That is one thing, and you cannot break through this. 14 is a line that's hard. For the tax laws, which we see here, the same thing. But you can break through, and you have a room of 0.5 uh, minus and plus. So here, you can break through. So this was all good, and we published a paper in 2015 by Julian Alston and colleagues, is this one. In Canada, they actually check uh, the alcohol, the like, kind of actual one, so which makes it possible that you can compare the stated and the like actual one. And what he found is, and I just have a table, looks like this. So uh, he found that everybody states it lower and then the actual one. And it could be because of tax reasons, but probably not. Um, let me just, if I do this, here, in for, for, for instance, this is all wine from, uh, from France. So it has 
an actual L called content the mean for all of these 25,000 wines of 13 stated is 12.9, so less. So you have here a kind of a minus 0.1, uh, I don't know. Now it doesn't, doesn't do it. Okay. Oh, no, here, 0.1. So and you can go through this and... I have a few more here, and that's all I like the reds. You see that red, that red one from Spain, they stayed at lower, 0.23 lower, and then it actually is. And I have more things, and in the new world, it's in Chile, it's even more. But for all of them, it is minus. You stated it lower, so which, which means at the actual is always more. So that becomes an important thing, or could be, become an important thing. And here for, for like whites, whites uh, the gap is pretty big too. It seems to be in Chile most, and um, what is this, the third one, Spain for white, is like kind of like uh, high too. So that is that, so what you read is not what it actually is. It's stated or claimed. So, okay. So this looks the same as what Warpy just saw, but there's one change. This, there was a change in the law in 2018. And all of this looks the same here. That looks the same too. There are now, there's something here you can, uh, you pay a little bit less in, in like taxes. But the crucial change, the crucial change is this. It goes up to six, 16. And table wine is not kept at 14. Now, for the tax laws, it's kept at 16, which might imply, and that's not clear, there will be the courts will talk, talk, talk about this, that you can break through this line or that line 14 is now gone. And table wine is 16. So you can use the 1.5% or 0.5% and claim that a wine that has 13.6% you can claim it has 14.1, in which case you dodge the tax. So, um, okay, I just want to go through this. And this is and the effective and tax, and tax rate that they paid. It should be like 25 plus uh, the tax. So there was here a tariff of about 2 per, per cent for all of the countries. I just put, put these four and Italy, so you can compare, it's red. And you see that Germany is about 25, right? And it's throughout the whole uh, time. France is not. It is at between 15 and 20. And Spain is between 9 and 15. So meaning some, like wines, they do not actually, they do not actually tax. So why, why is that and how could that be? Here is the share of wines that we import that have uh, more than 14%, like ABV. It was before, it was almost zero. You see this here, it was like tiny, tiny, France is blue, and luck of Italy is red, and see, France had more, like the wines were like uh, stronger, claimed at, at least, claimed stronger, they probably had like, more, and now it gets uh, closer, and now comes, I think it was October 21 or 22 in 2019, the, like the tax pops, pops in, and it jumps up right away. You see that France, it pops up, the share of 14 <coughs> plus percent wine goes to like a quarter of all the wines, and it, it grows more. So here it drops, it grows more. And the red line stays virtually flat. It's not flat. There was always a trend to, towards the wine that are uh, strong, stronger. So the share of, of, like, of like stronger wines has grown. But for like France, it has like soared. And then it came back, but not, like, not kind of all the way. It stays now no, no here. So that is a quite intriguing thing, which means that quarter or half doesn't pay any tax or tariff, which is a tax on imports. And here we, now I just look on the prices, but prices of the wines which are being taxed. So the idea here is if, if your wine is taxed, you can pass it on and charge more 
or you bring your price down and kind of like uh, suck it up. So what is the pass through rate of wine lower than 14? And so you see here the prices of wines from France is blue and it goes up and down. This is by month, up and down, up, up and down. It seems to be a drop here. Now this is like, this is just the like, wines that are being uh, taxed. It's kind of, it's kind of about like half of the wine. So prices drop, which could, which could mean that growers in France lower the price. In Italy, you don't see a lot of a drop. It just is like this. It wiggles around and it, it looks like kind of straight. So this means that like half of the wines can dodge the tax from France and half cannot and they have to lower the price, which means the burden is essentially to be borne by firms. Um, although that might not be so. It could be also cheaper wines. It could be that what used to be 13.9, the good stuff, now is claimed to be 14.1. Four and what is left in the group that's being taxed is only wine that was cheaper. So it's not really clear what this, this, this means. It could mean this or it could mean that. Um, then I have a few more things. Fixed effects panel model. So we like ran the whole thing. You all know what that, that is. I can speed through this. And we do this from like, from like January 2010 through October 2023 20, uh, for the, like the like main countries. And the main countries are these. So these are the main countries. And like Italy is number one. This is all of 2018, so just the year before. That tax France is number two. And then there is a huge, huge, huge gap. Uh, Spain was like the next one that was hit by the tax. And Germany and the UK is kind of like small and the wine from the UK is, made, is like mostly wine that was made in France. Okay, so we, we can com compare a few countries that were hit by the tax and a few were uh, not. And so I can go to this, I don't know what that is, the order was wrong. So now I first ran it country by country, just uh, France down, you read down Spain, Germany, U U UK. This is not a panel yet. So, um, what? Okay, and you see that here, and the tariffs effect on the share of 14 plus, like uh, wine. And you see that that is an effect of, it's plus in France, it's plus in Spain. So that share grew due to that tax in Germany, nothing and in the UK you see that too it actually grows so it was a tax that might have caused the share to like grow and the panel we have the panel here and we see virtually the same idea so that the share uh, of wine stronger so you can dodge that tax has grown in France Spain and the UK but in Germany, you cannot see a lot. And yet, it's probably we can explain that we saw your like, picture of German wines, and they all have like 9.5, 10.5. Even if you add 1.5 to that, it will not bring you over 14.1. There are probably a few, but not a lot. Um, so that is the panel model. And I did the same thing for the price of, of a, a table wine lower than 14. So just to see if prices drop, this is the free on board price. And the same idea, prices for these wines have dropped. They have dropped in France, in Spain, in Germany too, in the UK, not. So the T, T cents are kind of really, really low. In the panel, we see the same thing here, but the effects are not as clear. You see a strong effect in France and maybe a borderline effect for Germany, but it, it tends to be prices for these wines that are being hit and do not dodge the tariffs drop. Now, uh, here is now what we did. We have a kind of a treatment month by month for France, for Germany, for the U UK, just to see how was the trend in the share of 14% plus wines. And so how 
fast can companies learn? That is, pro that is kind of pretty much what it, what it shows. France, Spain, and, and Germany in November. And that comes from the uh, panel model. And you see that here is kind of a smaller climb, a, a, a kind of a smaller jump. But, but like kind of in month two, the French guys learned like fast. So there is a huge growth in the share of 14 plus. And then Spain ex, ex, exploded. It just that process, that process of learning is incredibly fast. It takes like a month or two and half of all of your stuff is really strong and you pay a tax of zero. Really strong on the, uh, on the label. Okay, I think I'm virtually through. I have a couple of wines which are, so uh, I shouldn't show uh, this. Uh, because they are, the like, question is, do these wines really have 14.1 or not? And we have a couple of wines and labels, a couple of hundreds, uh, where we have the same wine sold in Germany, in Spain, in France, and they all have 12.5. And exactly the same wines have a 14.1 here. 